In that job, oh, here we go. I walked underground tunnels between the United States and Mexico on that border. How did I fucking miss this? Yeah, I was talking like I always am. I went after transnational games. I'll like, on some of my YouTube reacts that I upload to the, the YouTube channel, like, I'll have people comment like he's just talking over the video. <laughs> Drug cartels and human traffickers that came into our country illegally. I prosecuted them in case after case, and I won. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump, on the other hand, has been talking a big game about securing our border, but he does not walk the walk. Or as my friend Quavo would say. Oh wait, really? That's when he she. Oh my God, I heard this part. <laughs> he does not walk it like he talks it. <laughs> I remember, I remember hearing that and being like, oh wait, what'd she just say? We were talking over this whole thing. You can, uh, there's a, a shooting range in Vegas where you can shoot one. It's right that behind the dispenser I used to go to on Las Vegas Boulevard. Significant border security bill in decades. So this border bill is the one that they were trying to get passed. Uh, it's a it's the a Republican border bill, Republican anti-immigration bill, and what it does essentially is Donald Trump when he came into office he got rid of uh, being able to seek asylum with an executive order. He just got rid of it. Which means when people would come here and show up at the border and say, hey, we're fleeing like political violence or something like horrible that's going on. We're seeking asylum. Instantly started on the process of becoming an asylum seeker. Trump got rid of that. So when people would show up here, say it's a family, a mom, dad, and their kid, they're instantly treated as criminals. The mom and dad, because they're adults, have to get taken away, separated from the child, put in like jail. And then the kids get sent to those like concentration camps like we saw. Now, Biden and Harris didn't do an executive order to get rid of it. They actually reversed that. Actually, I'm pretty sure it was the Trump administration that reversed it because they were like looking so bad. Everybody was like, holy fuck. They're literally like, there's kids like dying in these facilities. Um, but I, I forget who it was that reversed it. But... The new immigration bill that Harris is talking about that Biden was trying to get passed is essentially the same thing. Once we hit a certain number of people, immigrants coming to the border seeking asylum, then asylum seeking gets cut off. So it's the same fucking thing. And people like Kamala and Biden trying to push these bills does nothing but lose them votes from the, from the left even from the center, from those people who never vote because they don't believe in the system. They believe it's a broken system. They, they don't want to like vote for the lesser of two evils constantly. And when you frame it like this, you're framing it as it is the lesser of two evils. They're both evil. They're both demonizing immigrants, both being anti-immigration. What Kamala could do here is try to appeal to the leftists, appeal to her base appeal to to liberal centrists the people that don't ever vote by being pro-immigration saying we're going to pass an immigration bill that makes it easier for people to become citizens when they come here but instead they constantly demonize it in the same way that the republicans do in hopes that they're going to get some of those republican votes they're trying to reach across the aisle none of those people are going to vote for you okay their party has always been anti-immigrant, all right? They're just going to vote for them still. They're not going to look at the Democrats and be like, oh, wow, the Democrats are anti-immigrant? Maybe we'll vote for them. No, they're going to vote for the people that they've always rode with who have always been anti-immigrant. So what you got to do is be strong, have a fucking backbone, and be pro-immigration. But they're all anti-immigration at the end of the day because it's just going to lead... To businesses being able to exploit these illegal undocumented immigrants and just keep that system going.
some of the most conservative... Like the Republicans openly demonize immigrants so that their base will never be sympathetic or empathetic to immigrants and then they'll never vote in a way that'll be sympathetic or uh, empathetic to immigrants. And then the Democrats just pretend. And then they're like, oh no, but we gotta like have this like strong, strong anti-immigration bill so we can compete with the Republicans. No, you have to stand apart from them. Conservative Republicans in Washington, D.C. supported the bill. Even the Border Patrol endorsed it. It was all set Damn, to Damn, that's pass. fucking insane. But at the Fork, last what the minute, fuck? Trump directed his allies in the Senate to vote it down. Right. He tanked, tanked the bipartisan deal because he thought it would help him win an election. That is true. The only reason that Trump told the Republicans to oppose it is because... It, you, they just can't be seen supporting something the Democrats do. But that bill is essentially the Republican immigration bill. Which goes to show Donald Trump does not care about border security. He only cares about himself. So right there, I told you guys, it, Zoop asked me, a bunch of people... Will I be voting for Kamala? And I said there was three things. How she deals with Israel-Palestine, how she deals with the border, who she picks for VP. Right here, the way she's talking about dealing with the border, not getting my vote. No way. And when I am president, I will work to actually solve the problem. Well, all you did... To show you're going to solve the problem is say you're going to pass a Republican anti-immigration bill. So here is my pledge to you. As president, I will bring back the border security bill that Donald Trump killed, and I will sign it. Yeah, I agree, Forth. I definitely agree. Um, but, you know, if you have something that says the right to bear arms, people are just going to have them, you know? It's going to happen. And like I keep saying, I am not anti-gun in any way. I'm not anti-hunting. I, I don't think all guns should be taken away. I just believe in common sense gun reform where there's stronger background checks put in place to keep it, to keep like psychos from getting these AR-15s and then going and killing a bunch of elementary school students. That's it. That's, just, that's how I feel about guns. I've never shot one myself, and there may be times where we've, like, talked about gun tubers and me giving my opinion on how, like, I would believe that, like, most gun tubers, even if they're not, like, outwardly saying it, are probably, like, conservatives and believe in, like, horrible things. Things like that. I'll, I'll have, like, nuanced discussions. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not anti-gun at all. Nope, and it hates guns. Okay, true. And people who hunt. True! Okay, so is that the end of the immigration part? This campaign is not just about... Yeah, okay, so that, that right there, not, uh, not a good look in my opinion. I feel like this whole speech was great. I don't, I don't think there were any other points that I like stopped and really criticized what she was saying. I was very lived up. Like I said, domestically, I'm excited for her to beat Trump. Um, but beyond that, there's more like i said that first thing how she deals with israel palestine is another contributing factor in my support for her the other day she met with netanyahu after netanyahu gave his address to congress hitler too electric boogaloo the guy that is currently genociding the palestinian people now she didn't go to the the congressional meeting and there was a lot of democrats that like sat out too Um, but it was, she was very open about having a private meeting with Netanyahu. And I made jokes on Twitter where I was like, oh my God, I just know she's going to arrest him. I know she's going to arrest him in their private meeting, coconut army. But I know that I was joking. I know that wasn't going to happen. Um, but during, during Netanyahu's speech to Congress, there were some, uh, pro-Palestinian protesters, counter-protesters outside. And Kamala gave this statement. 
statement from the Vice President Kamala Harris. Yesterday at Union Station in Washington, D.C., we saw despicable acts by unpatriotic protesters and dangerous hate-fueled rhetoric. The only thing unpatriotic that was going on that day is that there was a bunch of United States elected representatives cheering on a foreign diplomat, a foreign leader who was demonizing peaceful American citizen protesters outside. No matter what those like elected United States representatives believe in, who they feel like they represent, they should represent peaceful protesters before they represent a foreign leader. Even if those peaceful protesters are all Democrats, you know, every single one of those Republicans in that hall should feel like they represent them more than they represent somebody like Netanyahu, okay? that That's the only thing that was unpatriotic about that day. And I'm not somebody that believes in being patriotic, okay? Patriotism, nationalism, fascism, they're just stepping stones. But this is an area where I will be like, that is unpatriotic. For elected representatives to be siding with a foreign leader over peaceful protesters outside. And another thing, burning the American flag is protected under the First Amendment, okay? The protected act. That's freedom of speech. Um, I condemn any individuals associating with the brutal terrorist organization Hamas, which has vowed to annihilate the state of Israel and kill Jews. Um, Hamas only exists because of Israel. If Israel wasn't a settler state that was colonizing the Palestinian people, putting them into an apartheid state, Hamas wouldn't exist. October 7th wouldn't have happened. But October 7th was a violent resistance to a violent occupation and genocide that is going on. Um, Pro-Hamas graffiti and rhetoric is abhorrent and we must not tolerate in our nation. It's not pro-Hamas. It's pro-ceasefire. Pro the liberation of the Palestinian people. Nobody out here is saying, oh my God, we love Hamas so much. Everybody's saying, free the Palestinian people. I condemn the burning of the American flag. Well, sorry, uh, that's a fucking... Pr uh, that's, a, that's protected by the First Amendment, okay? That flag is a symbol of our highest ideals as a nation and represents the promise of America. It should never be desecrated in that way. I support the right to peacefully protest, but let's be clear. Anti-Semitism, hate, and violence in any kind of any kind have no place in our nation. There was no anti-Semitism going on, and if it was, it was just a few people. The broader movement is free Palestine. Uh, it has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. It has everything to do with ending an apartheid state and stopping a genocide. So this right here, bad. That's, like I said, those three things, the border during her speech, losing me. Her statement on the peaceful protesters outside of Netanyahu's speech, already losing me. And Netanyahu is Hitler number two. Us siding with him is the same thing as like Japan and Italy siding with Hitler in World War II. And like standing up and giving him a, an ovate, like a round of applause. Um, you have an AR and a pistol, but it's locked in a safe ammunition. Damn, there you go. Uh, pistol, self defense firearms. And I mean, like, if you're the thing is using an AR 15 for like self defense, like, I understand like talking about like killing like wild hogs especially like having a semi-automatic for that when there's like a pack right there and you're trying to get them all. Like, I understand that. But like, if you're using an AR-15 for self-defense at your home, like you're going to shoot your fucking neighbor. You're not only going to shoot the intruder, but you're going to kill your neighbor too. Or like somebody else in your house in another room. Uh, and yeah, there's tons of things you can do before you actually need to use your firearm. But I, I am like totally for like... Somebody breaks in your house and you have like like you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Like you can't just be like, oh I'm I hope that they're not they don't have a gun and they're like not gonna shoot me. Like you if somebody breaks in your house, 
gotta defend yourself. In the same way that the Palestinians are defending themselves when somebody's trying to break into their house. Israel, Israel the IDF. Um, why can't we just fight with swords, true? Like real men. When men used to be men. You want a couple of historical guns, but it's super illegal here. Yeah, I, oh, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I remember you saying, yeah, the license for air guns. Yeah, muskets, anyone? I remember you saying you wanted that gun. I remember that. Um, okay, so... That was Kamala's statement for the peaceful protests... This is what she had to say after her meeting with Netanyahu. Today, I had a frank and constructive meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu about a wide range of issues, including my commitment to Israel's security. Bad. Israel is a settler, settler uh, colonialist state. That's it. Doing a genocide on a people. They don't need security. Um, the importance of addressing the humanitarian crisis in Gaza and the urgent need to get the ceasefire and hostage deal done. So exactly like I said, she's playing the middle ground. Israel has a right to defend itself. Hamas is bad, but also ceasefire. What's happening to the Palestinians is bad. When you play the middle ground like that, nothing's going to get done other than the genocide is going to keep happening. Like, getting the hostages back isn't going to stop what's happening in Gaza. It's not going to start a ceasefire. Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't want the, the hostages back because he's able to justify continuing bombing them. Because he's like, oh no, they still have the hostages. We got to keep bombing them. But the moment they get the hostages back, they're going to keep bombing. They're going to find another reason to keep justifying it. Getting the hostages back doesn't mean anything. It's the one, it's it's not even like a like a chip that the like Hamas holds, you know? It's, it's like a good thing that they have hostages when it comes to Israel's side. Because they're able to just keep bombing them. They've killed their own... Israel has killed their own citizens that are hostages because they're bombing those areas. They don't care about the hostages. Hamas probably cares about the hostages more than Israel does. Um, and then here's a video of her talking about it. Repeating, Israel has a right to defend itself and how it does so matters. Hamas is a brutal terrorist organization. Again, uh, they only exist because of Israel. They wouldn't exist if there wasn't a genocide and apartheid state going on. And October 7th was just a resistance to a violent occupation. On October 7, Hamas triggered this war when it massacred 1,200 innocent. It's not a war, okay? It, it, it's, it's been like a colonization effort since 1948 people including 44 it's like, Americans. it's like people invading and then some people trying to protect themselves Americans Hamas has committed horrific acts of sexual violence and took 250 hostages there are American citizens who remain captive in Gaza Sagi Deco Hen Hirsch Goldberg Poland Idan Alexander Keith Siegel, Omer Nutra, and the remains of American citizens Judy Weinstein, God Haggai, and Itai Hen. Is she just going to name American okay, hostages? I don't fucking care about their. Okay. Um, I will not be silent. But so, yeah, again, that whole speech, just playing the middle ground. Uh. The fuck i will not be silent harris's uh i'm sorry i will not be silent harris voices concern for gaza after meeting with netanyahu so i just had a frank and constructive meeting with Wait, prime minister this, netanyahu is this where she them? starts saying their names repeating and how it does so matters people has committed captive about the scale of human suffering in gaza a serious concern expressed with the human food insecurity food and desperate hungry people themselves to become numb innocent people this organization right to defend itself where does she start naming them? to the palestinian people 
the hostages home. Silent. Let's get the deal done. Okay, so this is like cut up. All right, let's just watch this. So I just had a frank and constructive meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu. I told him that I will always ensure that Israel is able to defend. Yeah, and the thing is, is terrorism is just the new communism. Like back in the day, and we still like call people communists, but back in the day, it was like, we're fighting communism. There's communists that we have to fight. Now, in, in our lifetime, it's now terrorism and the terrorists that we have to fight post 9-11. And that terrorist was a thing before 9-11, but that's really when it ramped up. Um, but yeah, I'm like, there's a, there's a reason why so many people from all around the world, it's not just Mexico and South America. It's people from all around the world are coming to our southern border, and it's because we destabilize these regions. We go there and we completely destabilize them, do coups, proxy wars to instill leaders over there that will do our bidding. They will sell us their natural resources, whatever it is. Itself, including from Iran and Iran backed. I can understand like calling it a war post October 7th, just because like Hamas has started to resist. But it wasn't a war before that. Like in 1948, or after World War II, Jewish refugees were placed there in Palestine. And it was like, this is Israel now. And then in 1948, when the British mandates expired that like called the area Palestine, Israel started to violently uh, colonize that territory and take it over. So like before October 7th, it wasn't a war. It's literally like an apartheid state, a genocide. Now, since October 7th, Hamas is trying to fight back and resist, but I just feel like it's... Calling it a war makes it seem like... Like there's some good to both sides, you know? Like they both have something to fight for, whereas like there's nothing good that Israel's fighting for. Militias such as Hamas and Hezbollah. Yeah, I, I agree that like when I saw October 7th, it could be looked at as a war for sure was a young girl collecting funds to plant trees for Israel. To my time in the United States Senate and now at the White House, I have had an unwavering commitment to the existence of the State of Israel, to its security, and to the people of Israel. I've said it many times, but it bears repeating. Israel has a right to defend itself, and how it does so matters. Hamas is a brutal terrorist organization. On October 7, Hamas triggered this war when it massacred 1,200 innocent people, including 44 Americans. Hamas has committed horrific acts of sexual violence okay, we saw and took part. 250 hostages. There are American citizens who remain captive in Gaza. I also expressed with the Prime Minister my serious concern about the scale of human suffering in Gaza, including the death of far too many innocent civilians. But see, stuff like this doesn't mean anything when she just said what she said about condemning Hamas and they're like protecting the state of Israel. Israel is a settler colonist state. That's it. The only solution is a one state solution where everybody lives there peacefully and has equal rights. And I made clear my serious... I, like I've said before, Bent has said this before. If... Like, Palestinians would have just taken in Jewish people as refugees. And just been like, yeah, come and live with us. Back in the 1940s. But instead, it was like, no, this is Israel now and we're taking over your fucking land. ...concern about the dire humanitarian situation there with over 2 million people facing high levels of food insecurity. And anybody that tries to tell you that the existence of Israel is like what keeps Jewish people safe and without it, like all Jewish people would be at risk. Like there's more Jewish people that live in the United States than Israel. And half a million people facing catastrophic levels of acute food insecurity. What has happened in Gaza over the past nine... And again, I just always want to reiterate this. Being critical of the state of Israel has nothing to do with the religion. 
has nothing to do with the Jewish religion and everything to do with being critical of a far-right authoritarian government that is genociding a people. In months is devastating. The images of dead children and desperate, hungry people fleeing for safety, sometimes displaced for the second, third, or fourth time. We cannot look away in the face oh, yeah. of these tragedies. 100%. We cannot we, allow ourselves they, to be- There are strong, like, not only our strongest ally in the Middle East, but like our strongest ally. They train our cops. The FBI was working with the IDF using their technology to crack the Trump shooter's phone. The, Israel is building technology for us to control the Suez Canal. Okay? Like, it, they are our biggest ally. And it's, we are allied with the modern day, like, Nazi party. Become numb to the suffering, and I will not be silent. Let's get the deal done. The only so difference is that Israel doesn't want to take over the world and be like the new world power in this, like how Hitler did. We can get a ceasefire. Which that's the real thing that got the United States into the war. It wasn't, oh, we have to go save Jewish people, which that, that should have been the reason. But FDR took a while to get into the war. It wasn't because of that. It was because, oh, shit, Germany's trying to be the new world leader. <laughs> Step aside, little bro. That's us. To end the war, let's bring the hostages home and let's provide much needed relief to the Palestinian people. And ultimately, I remain committed to a path forward that can lead to a two state solution. Yeah, so two state solution is bad. That's not going to work. Um,. They, like, it's already, they, they've already been trying to live under a two-state solution since 1948, and Israel has done nothing but try to just kill them all off. So there's only one state, Israel. So there needs to be one state where everybody lives peacefully together. And if you can't live there peacefully, you got to fucking leave. And like I said, back in the 1940s, Palestinians would have just taken in Jewish people as refugees and let them assimilate into their, their society. It didn't have to be a colonization effort. Oh, yeah. Like, literally, they built our space program. They got us to the moon. <laughs> the, the Nazis, Nazi scientists built, our, uh, b built NASA. Um, but I think, I think that's about it when it comes to Kamala. Like I said... It was three things. Two of those things, the border and now Israel-Palestine, making me seriously question my support for her. We're going to have to see who the VP is, but even if the VP ends up being Bashar, that's not going to make me look any differently at how she views the border and Palestine. So that's how I'm feeling about that. Let's go ahead and watch this video now. Uh, let me make sure that's all I wanted to watch, right? 